giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. Uh, we're going to move on. And that was a really good discussion. It was a trip down memory lane. Um, so I'm sure that many of you have seen the awesome crowdsource post that Alan posts on his Facebook. And one of his most recent ones has generated a lot of interesting discussion around what the community would change about FRC and BURST. So ranging from scorekeepers wanting hats um, to holding volunteers accountable for their behavior, which I am totally for. So before we dive into this, uh, which many of you could have contributed to Alan's Facebook posts, um, the fun Facebook posts and Instagram posts and Chief Delphi discussions, I just wanna say a big thank you to everybody at headquarters who's made this season possible, who put in the whole effort to make two champs happen. Um, you know, while we want more and more and more, the reality is it's a small group of people that are working their butts off uh, pretty much year round and are really doing it because they want people to have a really good experience. So thank you to all of them. Um, I can't imagine the relief that they're feeling now that the season is over. So hope that they are relaxing a little bit. Um, and so um, everybody on the show right now who's a guest is currently the district model, which for those of you who don't know, each district runs basically as an independent little organization. So we have all experienced, though, the regional model as well. So before we hear from Alan about all of the great discussion that happened on his Facebook posts, um, Stacey and Corey, what would you guys change if you could about either FRC specifically or FIRST as a whole? Because I know a lot of us have seen or are involved with many of the family of programs in FIRST. Um, so I, I think, and again, it's not taking away from all of the wonderful things that we first already does and the changes that they make. It's obvious that they they are listening and trying to make things better and make changes as the community sees fit. Um, one thing that I th do think might be interesting, and I, I'm not exactly sure how it would work, but I think that there could be some more training for judges at FRC. Um, I know that, you know, I've judged at FLL a lot and I've judged for FRC a lot and sometimes it does seem like with FLL it's like so strict like how you're judging and then you know in the you know when you're doing the deliberations it can get so heated and so intense and that's wonderful and all of the people that go to events and judge you know they want to be doing the right thing and they they are and they're giving up their time but I think that they would even feel better if they were equipped for knowing exactly what they're looking for for each award. And so I just think that like some sort of, I mean, referees have to be certified, um, you know, robot inspectors or so. I just think that that was something to explore. Um, and I would say, I think that maybe just a couple more Woody Flowers awards sprinkled here and there. When you look at how many mentors <laughs> there are in the world would probably, you know, I don't think it would hurt anybody. That's probably it. I think those are two good points, Stacey. Corey, what about you? Uh, I agree with Stacy on the Woody Flowers thing. The fact that a district can only send one nominee other than the other nominees that are already nominated unless they get renominated. You have to read that. It's an interesting rule. But getting more Woody Flowers from a district to Worlds to compete would be nice. Um, in FIM specifically, we have like 540 to teams in our district and we are our own operating machine. Nobody really knows what's happening inside of us unless teams <laughs> do big breakout years like 3707 did this year and last year. It's like you don't know about them until they bust out onto the big scene. I don't even know most of the teams in our district because I don't see them. It's like I don't know what teams are in the UP. I don't know what teams are up by the thumb. I don't know all the teams on the east side of the state because I don't see them. I don't compete on the east side. I compete on the west side. And I don't, there's tons of, there's hundreds of teams that I've never seen before that are in our district. Um, and even when we do go to district champs, there's four divisions of 40 teams. So you're just pretty much running another district event. And there's 120 teams that you have no chance of being on the same team with right because there's just near the outside of your division so even if i get to go i'll never get a chance to play with certain teams with the way things pan out so it's just really big and it's a huge scale and it's fantastic we're at 542 teams i just wish we could play with more of them definitely agree i can't wrap my head around the over 500 it teams that's so crazy absolutely insane <laughs> yeah so Helen, based on i i saw like the 
Facebook, your Facebook post and it was like, view like a gajillion more comments. <laughs> like here, like, so yes. that the response that you got for that post is pretty so, amazing. And so it's um, the second year that we've, that I've done it. So the first one is actually more. That first one, I think almost hit 600. This one is approaching 400, wow. something like that. Like it is, yeah, people, people like complaining and suggesting mm -hmm. and all of the above. Um, yeah. <laughs> but a lot of it is to figure out what things in the community people are actually worried about, what things right after the season are they thinking that we should actually improve, right? Some of them are really simple, some of them are complicated, some of them are impossible. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> but there's a, lot of, there's a lot of themes in there of what people want to do. And a lot of it, like you brought up, is things with how do we support um, volunteers and make sure we're getting the best volunteers we can and they're having the best interactions with teams. Um, and there are a lot of ideas on how to do that. Um, yeah, it, it culminates all the way through judging and volunteers and robot stuff. How can we support uh, new teams and make sure that the kit of parts we give them is actually beneficial to them and it's not just stuff that goes in a closet and no one uses? Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> there's a right, like there's so many things that we can do that it's just where do we focus our energies and hopefully we can as a community make sure that we're communicating this to people at headquarters and things that we can also do when we're running our districts and we're running our events and that we're supporting teams, how can we better help all of these things and point out these problems and suggestions and figure out how we can make them better? Yeah. So as somebody who is obviously deeply involved with, you know, your team and then also your district and just the first um, community as a whole, like, what do you suggest based on the feedback that you've gotten, which is obviously like all over the place, what do you think is the best course of action for people if they like are super passionate about, you know, there's this massive problem in this one thing. Cause I mean, I would say based on the comments that we read on your Facebook post and the comments that are on like the first updates now post, people are most passionate about the things that they've obviously experienced, you know, one-on-one -on -one or their students or their team have had like either like a really traumatic or great experience or a really terrible experience. Uh, like what would you suggest they go and do with all of this pent up, you know, passion? <laughs> Um, that is a good question. What do you do with all of the passion? Um, I mean, so the biggest thing people can do is one, re helping recruit good people to be volunteers is a big part of it, right? Everybody, not just the volunteer coordinators, it's not a job they can do, have to find good volunteers and make sure we have people interacting with our students and helping to be that those partners in all these places to make sure that we're inspiring our students the way we're supposed to, right? Um, the same thing with helping other teams have the best experience they possibly can, reaching out early, offering advice, doing whatever you can to document what you do and publish it. Um, all of that stuff helps, and it just makes our community stronger whenever we're doing that, right? We're having those discussions, and also yeah. just making sure we're talking about it, right? Feedback back to your people, back to the people who are local to you, running your district, your regional directors, your first senior mentors, all of those people, making sure you're communicating often and that you're not just holding in any frustration and being annoyed by it and you're actually talking about it um, and talking about it with other teams and figuring out ways that you can help be a part of the solution. Definitely. So real quick on that note. So um, Stacy and I have been deeply involved with any first stuff and we notice a lot of like complaining and confusion and personally my suggestion. So besides what you said is, you know, ask questions. If you don't understand something like, thoughtfully and like politely ask questions, ask your senior mentors, ask, you know, who do I go and ask this question to? Um, because I think the the biggest thing that we've noticed in New England is there's no real understanding of like, how is this like magical district working or operating? Like, how is this district event running? You know, how do I become a volunteer? And obviously the first website is chock full of information, but it is like finding a needle in a haystack. So asking somebody for help usually leads to, you know, the solution that you're looking for. Um, I will give major props to headquarters this year. I was really excited to see, um, like as somebody that's part of the Compass Alliance, they came to us asking if we would help develop resources. So they're looking for people that have, you know, the experience and an understanding of what teams need. And they're looking for that, you know, solution for teams that may not be able to get it you know, in their area, like not everybody has a spectrum or a strike force or a 195 to go and like ask, you know, how do you guys do this? Like, you're doing it good. So I'm excited to see that they're kind of reaching out to the first community. And I hope they continue to do that um, to improve the experience for everybody. So in chat, um, we do have some wonderful 
suggestions um, on the first updates now Instagram. Stuart seventeen forty five is the one that really wants a scorekeeper hat, and you know what? Go make one. Why yeah, not? Go, you know, go bring your own. Like I'll make you one. <laughs> Do it with the theme Etsy. of the game. <laughs> yeah, there's actually a field reset guy in our district that has a specific themed hat every year to match the theme. It's pretty intense. Well, let's um, do a whole costume. Give him like you know, the space theme. So give him like a white shirt and a really skinny black tie. Like he's Houston <laughs> at NASA and he's in charge of the space mission. There so, you go. Go nuts. <laughs> I, I, that's good. I like your thinking, Corey. <laughs> um, Rafa PP25 said, make matches totally dependent on a team's abilities, not random factors. Okay. Um, Jarrett M. Miller said, Hall of Fame status for winning Alliance and FTC Inspire Award at Worlds, but no automatic invitation like FRC. I don't agree with that personally, but... Wait, does FTC Inspire Award not get hall, like a Hall of Fame status? Correct. There is no Hall of Fame for FTC, what? and it does not yeah. necessarily get you automatic. Like winning FTC, for example, um, does not get you automatic bids in the future. What about the following year? I don't think it does for the following year either. Oh. Really? Off the top of my head. That's... I could be mistaken, but I'm about 80% wow. sure. Yeah, that's not very nice. <laughs> that seems well, pretty yeah, terrible. It's, right, it's culture-driven, right? Like, you want to... Well, it's just also, it's, there's so few teams games at the FTC World Championship, though, right? Like there's there's so few spots. If you do automatic bid them, I, I can kind of see why they don't. It's okay. going to be expanding next year, though. Yeah. That's cool. I'm like, I am I feel like with first updates now, I'm learning more and more about FTC, and like, <laughs> it's crazy. Um, it just, It's very confusing, but very interesting to me. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so DJ god d1 said bring back festival of champs i agree because it's not too far from no. where i live Corey says no. no why no i don't I, no you don't why? want it but that trophy's it, it was, so dope it was it is a sweet trophy um the banner <laughs> is nice too um it was just like like we could do like a whole show on the story behind foc in the back okay. the, the yeah. things that happened to make foc happen that year yeah and um the lid, like everybody in season ended when De- Detroit and Houston were done, and our season didn't end until FOC was done. So our season got extended three months because we were just continually chucking away at trying to get ready for FOC, and oh. we were burnt out. And that is why we did not do a lot of off-season events in 2018 because we were just tired. Love that. We were just done. So well, Corey, we Corey, will you come back and do a FOC show for us? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> There's, Behind the man. Oh, if we get some other FOC people on. Yeah, man. Oh, yeah. We, we we'll can make talk, it happen. We can talk about some of like the uh, inner workings that happened behind the scene to make hey, it well, it's, happen. Well, it's what the people wanted. I remember walking around uh, with Jamie Luce, the FRC team advocate, and JB at the time um, at IRI, polling teams, just asking them like general questions about, you know, now that two chances happening, like, what do you want to see? And I think every everybody said like one final champion showdown. Um, a lot of students said, build like a, a super dome in the middle of America and make everybody, you know, flock there. So <laughs> build up, build, no, build up. Yeah. We, we will build it. They will come type deal. Exactly. Yeah. So they made it happen. It happened. Um, so real quick before we hop into our trivia extravaganza. So comments from Facebook were <laughs> make it so there was an FRC for adults to participate in. But like as adults, like actually do the FRCing. Hashtag okay, so can we stop real fast, real fast <laughs> yeah. on that point? Because seriously, we already have an FRC for adults. It's called FRC, yeah. right? Like, this is I, I don't even understand how we but can. They want to drive the all, robots. So that they can, they can de- <laughs> do it practice, they do what you want. Season event for adults but, only. Yeah. Like for for 100 percent seriously, that is one of the things I actually would if I was in charge of FRC for a day. It's one of the things I would do is explicitly state that first is a partnership between mentors and students, and mm-hmm. that. No team should be striving for 100% either way, and no one should be celebrating that, right? Like, it's supposed to be a goal for everyone to do it. Each team can do what they want and can yep. run it however they want, but you shouldn't – no one feels feel shame if 0% of their students do CAD or if 100% of their robot is t- built and designed by students. Everywhere in between is totally fine, and that's the way the program has always been. And yep. headquarters needs to put that out to say that that is the case. Mm-hmm. I think to that point, um, when they did the – what was it the the twitch shows where they went and showed teams during their build season like they came to our lab 
I will say that those shows did a good job of showing just how different teams are operating. Like, I think that that's like a good step towards that. And First Updates now does it with like behind the bumpers and stuff. But I think First is definitely trying to to showcase like the different methods of doing things. And I mean, I agree with you, Alan, 100%. Um, I mean, when you when you were talking about that, it just made me think of like, what if babies were president or whatever, like as I saw <laughs> some movie, it's like, you know, if you just throw a book at a kid and say, here, kid, learn, like, it's just, it doesn't really work that way. And you invest too much money and time to just let them run off with it. But anyway, so um, last one is, I'd suggest first reconsider allowing teams to compete outside of their district and region. They take points and awards away from teams who only have one regional or two district chances to compete. I had, I, I like going to regionals with my kids. It's probably the only time that most of them will ever get to go travel um, is with our team if we go either outside of district to another district or to a regional. So I get I think, it. But... I think teams that are in regional format and you have third plays available at districts, it should not be exclusive to just yeah. like, if I, like right, I have an open spot. People from outside the district can come in. Um, yeah, probably won't happen in Michigan because there's just a ton of teams. So spots won't be available. Hey, New England, definitely. <laughs> we were there. Right, were but but why not let a, why weekend, not let so. a regional team come in? It's no yeah. different than a team that's in the outside of it that's in another district come in. It's the same. Mm-hmm. Right. They all of a sudden get their on. They all of a sudden get their on. Well, not anymore. But <laughs> they, but, well, they especially back. now with no unbag, like they absolutely should be able to play now. Yeah. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.